Terrence. Garvin. Mm -hmm. State your state your name and occupation, sir. Man, um, Terrence Garvin, linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what do you want all the fans here in Seattle to call you? I know, you know, Terrence Garvin is your government name. What do you want folks to call you? Um, I like T. You like T? Oh, oh. oh, you don't know want that Christmas music? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that, that's that good stuff right there. That's good stuff. That's the temptation. But, uh, okay, so you like T? I, I like but, but the guys call you TG. They call me TG. I, I got so many names, man. They call me TG. They call me T. T Garn. My coach called me the Whisper. That's what they calling me right now, the Whisper. Okay, can you expl can you explain the Whisper <laughs> to us? Cause I so we be in the me. I all right. So I feel like I talk loud. No, you don't. If, if, no, you don't, bro. <laughs> I'm so. You know what? I get your name already. Cause I thought I was doing this. I'm like, man, you got to speak up. So they call you the Whisper. Go fucking continue. They call me the Whisper. Cause I mean, I feel like I talk loud. Like I feel like I feel like I'm I'm yelling right now. You feel me? <laughs> But it's like, they call me the whisper and they say, I'll be, I'll be whispering. They say, I'll say something and it's like, everybody like, what'd you say? Like, I can't really hear you. Like, I'm always whispering. Man. But that's weird, but I'm always talking though. Nah, nah. Yeah, that's a good point. I never thought about that. The whisper, okay. The whisper. All right, man. So now you originally, you're from, you're from Baltimore. Maryland, right? Yes, sir. And so now you've been out, you've been in the league for like five years. You're, this is your first time on the West Coast. Right. What's that like living out here, my man? <laughs> it's different. It's definitely different. Like, the days are different. It's still, I mean, of course, time zone. Like, I mean, the time zone is different, whatever, whatever, but it, it's a different day. You right. know what I mean? So, I was saying, like, let me say, so say like a Monday. Let's say you go about your day, boom, boom, boom. It's five o'clock. Monday Night Football is on at 5 out here. Right. So now it's kind of like you got to, your day is different. Like at 5, you're watching football. You might sit down for a second. Then you might go back to whatever you do. Uh, on the East Coast, it's more like, I feel like it's your day and then you just settle in at the end. Or it's more like once you in, you more settled in. What do you find yourself doing different out here as opposed to when you lived on the East Coast? So for an example, do you feel like you stay in the house more here than you did on the East Coast? Yeah, I feel like you definitely stay in the house more here than you do on the East Coast. It, it, it's almost like I feel like our days are, are longer here, but it's the same hours of days. It just feel like we have more day here. It's like, I don't know. It's, <laughs> okay. it's like, you're like, all right, like, it's seven now. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's seven now. So you're like, all right, my day is still, it's almost like you feel like it's still so much day left over here. Right. Uh, at home, like it's seven, it's like already right, seven. Like, you well, if you got so much time left here in Seattle, <laughs> why don't you get out and do more on your off days and different things like that? You you said you find yourself being in the house more, and I, you say the days are longer. Days why don't you longer. do? Why don't you do more here in Seattle? <sighs> I just feel like it's slow motion here. Like it's a little bit more. It's chill. You know what I mean? I'll be with my dudes a little bit. Like, I'll be with Shelton. I'll be with just different people, whatever, whatever. And we'll kick it. Okay. But I just feel like it's a different... It's just a different day. It's a different vibe. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. All right. Different vibe. Well, okay. Well, now that you're with the Seahawks now, right. how different are they as a team, as an organization, compared to where you've been before? Oh, it's definitely different. Um, I mean, it's all about fun. You know what I mean? That's definitely one thing. Coach Pete, he always talked about having fun. Like, everybody preaching in there, have fun, relax, be yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's definitely one thing you can say that's different. Like, other places is a little bit more, I mean, it's business like everywhere. Everywhere is business, business is business. Right. But it's just, I would say, in different places, it's a little bit more like, don't come in here smiling so hard, or don't come in here, like, it's just not that, you might not want to be that all the time. Right. You know what I mean? It might, it's a little bit more like, all right, let me kind of watch what I say, watch how I do in here. Time I get. It's just a little bit more particulars, but it, it's dope here. I, I love it over here. You know well, what I mean? What was it like the first time you were a part of? Because I know the morning meetings, y'all be having a good time in your morning meetings. Y'all be shooting basketball, you know what I mean? Having champions and all that kind of stuff. What, what was it like the first time you were in uh, a Seahawks morning meeting? Um, it was cool. It was cool. Um, you know, Coach P got all types of jokes and different skits he do. So it's like I seen one of the skits early, and it just, it just, it just make you feel loose and make you feel like you want to come to work. That's another thing I can say. Like, I guess it's like time flies when you're having fun. Right. Like it's already December. You know what I mean? I feel like I looked up on this West Coast, and I'm like, alright, it's December. Right. It's more like getting accustomed and everything. Wow. It's, it's just we have fun over here. We have fun. We but we get our work done. Okay. Before I, I'm, I want to ask you about. Bobby Wagner, K 
KJ Wright because because you're a linebacker and I, I want you to take us inside of that linebacker room. But before I do, what was TG like? I call it your TG. What was TG like growing up? What are some things that he did to get him to this point where you're at fifth year in the NFL? Right. Um, I mean, I grew up me, my mom, and my dad, so it was us. No like, siblings? It was us. I got an older sister. I got an older sister. My older sister is Kim. She's older than me, though. So okay. She's she's a little bit older than me. So she used to beat you up, man? No, nah, she ain't beat me up. Okay. Just making sure. Uh, you know, I mean, if she put your hands on it, I was like, man, Kim, don't be doing that. No, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I really... <laughs> let me say this. In the locker room, yeah. man, you can talk them about the 5200 block. From 5200 to about 5400, that's what I call it. It's my block right there. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Okay, wait, 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 wait. Say that again. You said the block. The block. Explain it. Explain that. So where my locker is over there. Your I'm locker. My locker. I'm next to KJ. I'm next to KJ. He to the left. He he number fifty. He number fifty. Okay. The block. He's kind of like I call him like the mayor of the block a little bit. Like he kind of just he. You know what I mean? He, you call KJ right the mayor. The mayor of the block. Why like, why do you think KJ is the he's mayor? Like, he's like the pops of the block. He like T like scoot your stuff over here. KJ does kind of act older than his age, huh? But I run the block. Whoa, whoa. So you run the block. <laughs> so KJ Wright is the mayor, but but Terrence Garvin runs the block. Runs now the block. you're fifty. You're fifty two. Fifty two. Fifty two hundred. Okay, you're fifty two hundred. Now what about fifty four? That's down the street a little bit. That's where the block kind of. That you know what I mean? You know when you go to the different blocks <laughs> in the neighborhood. Oh, the fifty four hundred block. That's a different block. That's, oh, that's Bobby that's right. Wagner block. Yeah, that's the end of the block. You don't really. You don't really mess with that I block. Go, I go down there. I say what's up. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. But taxes get paid through 5200 through 50. <laughs> <laughs> the taxes get paid, okay. You go 5200 through 5400. You know what I mean? Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm cool. Okay, so you call so you call KJ like he like the father figure, the mayor. Alright. What's what's Bobby like then? Bobby, Bobby's like Bobby kinda like he like the enforcer his block too, but Bobby's cool. Bobby's real particulous. He's real precise. Um, real. I say he's smart. You know what I mean? He's a real smart person. Like outside of football, inside of football, he's a really smart person. Real detailed with his life. Like I really, I talk to Bobby a little bit. I'll try to pick his brain with different stuff, but he's real. He's very detailed. Right. I would say he's a very detailed person. Is that what you learned from him so yeah, far? That's, you that's learned the thing. details? That's one thing I really learned from him. Like, he's real precise about everything. He seems like he's going to do the same thing. He's real consistent, I would say. You know what I mean? Like, gotcha. if he's going to get there at 6, he's going to get there at 6 every day. He's going to get there. He's just real detailed but real precise at the same time. I didn't get that. Okay, so in the linebacker meeting rooms, usually in all meeting rooms, you know, you explain the mayor, you explain the enforcer to Bobby Wagner. Who is the who is the one that tells all the jokes? Because it's got to be somebody in the linebacker room that tells a lot of jokes. Who is that? Um, I would say that's Palacio. 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 Palacio is jokes. He jokes. He's, Will Hoyer cracks some jokes, but probably them too. I say of the jokesters. Of yeah. The unit. Will Hoyer seems like a philosopher. I feel like that's KJ. Oh, okay. It's KJ. KJ's okay. He's our philosopher. Will Hoy, Will Hoy is kind of a jokester. He'll he'll get deep with you a little bit, mm -hmm. bro. Well, he's like, he's like the uncle, like the smooth uncle, per se. Like the one that's just come in, like, what's up? Like, real chill, real. Yeah, All real right. Real All right. So, okay. So, you've been out here in Seattle. Um, hey, you eat, you've been, you know, there's a lot of seafood out here in Seattle. Are you right. starting to like seafood, sushi? What do you, what do you nah, eat? I'm out from here? Maryland. I'm from where seafood started. You feel me? Now, you, know they, you know they say seafood is where we started. But I would say I love the seafood. I go to these little. It's, it's kind of like, it's not a hot and juicy, but it's like shacks they have out here. Mm -hmm. And I'll go get the pound of, pound of crab, pound of snow crab, snow crab legs okay. with the shrimp. Okay. Yeah, with the corn in it. Oh, oh, yeah. Solid. yeah. Solid. Okay. Solid. So I'll go do that on an off day or like, you know how you say it, where you're doing off day. I'll go try one, go see one in those spots. So just different stuff like that. So it's like the seafood out here is good. It's good. It's cool. Now you say you in the house a lot, so that means you're watching a lot of TV shows yeah. and Netflix and uh, which what's, what's some of your, your go-tos on Netflix? Some of my, some of my Netflix go-to. Yeah. I just okay, I just watched this this movie. It was called What Happened to Monday. That was pretty good. Um I watched like I, I think I watched Shameless the other day. 
it there for a second. That was alright. I like shows like I like Entourage. Okay. I like um, let me think. I love Entourage. I love like I watch like Arrow. You know what I mean? Some of them action shows a little bit. Right. Just different things. I like that um Luke Cage. Yeah, I like yeah, that that's a good one. They that's got this show called Defenders right now where they're all together. So you like a lot of you like comic kind of comic action -ish. Yeah, 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 I got you. I like a suspense, like what happened, who did it? Mm, I got you, I got I'm you. Too. So man, look, a lot of times I get guys in the car and so sometimes I, you know, I take that time to, uh, you know, ask advice. And maybe you can help me out. I mean, you, don't, don't tell anybody, but I've been married a whole bunch of times. Man, what kind of marriage advice I'm would nice you have for too. me? I'm nice at that. You nice at this? I'm nice at this. Man, well, man, right. help me out, man. I, I'm the only one probably in the Side world that note. needs this. Side note. I'm Side about, note. I'm thinking about writing a book. You know what I mean? I'm going to call it 2017. Just how relationships go with, in the new era. The 2017 relationship book. The code. I'm kind of like Dr. Phil, but... Yeah. So, so so you're the whisperer and you kind of like Dr. Phil. You nice with it. I'm like the relationship whisperer. Okay. The dog whisperer, the relationship whisperer. <laughs> All right. You're the relationship whisperer. All right. Well, like I said, I told you I've been married a, a bunch of times. Um, what are some, you know, give me some keys, man, some advice on how I can possibly stay married the stay next time married. I do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay. I would say for sure, it's just, it's just really, it's consistency. Okay. It's about, it's, it's just a relationship. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, as it would be with any body in any relationship, it's a relationship. So it's a lot of give and take. It's a lot of patience. You know what I mean? A lot of patience, a lot of like, you just have to have your mind ready for that. I really believe that your mind has to be ready. You have to be like, look, everything's going to work. It's going to be good. Even when it go bad sometimes, you got to be willing to know that why you came in it and it's going to work. It's going to go good. Do you take that same philosophy and put it towards football as well? Yeah, I, feel like, I feel like you have to. I was, that's why I say it's a relationship with anything. And I'm real big on God. I'm real, I'm real God first. You know what I mean? And I really feel like with that, he tells us like, it's going to work. Like, it's going to work out. You, like, you got, you got to look at us like, we're blessed. We've got to this point. He's been with us to this point. So it's like, you can't, can't think just because something's kind of going bad right now in the moment it's going bad that everything's just gonna fall apart it's like you, you've been strong to this point guys had your back guys blessed you to this point so it's like stay stay strong with your faith you know what i mean stay strong with what you believe it's like when things get the worst when you got to go to heart something you got to believe even harder so i got you i got you well, right now we're in the uh christmas season uh one of the you know our favorite holidays just finished Thanksgiving. Now and my birthday, my birthday right there. Oh, when's your birthday? Man, January first. Me and Martin Luther King, we the only two got national holidays as our birthday. We get you out of work, out of school. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> January first. You're born on January first. Now, because your birthday is t is so close to Christmas, and I don't know if your parents are gonna see this. Do you feel like? You got slighted a little bit yeah. with Christmas, right, you know with, with birthday going. gifts. Yeah, it's one or the other. Like it's kind of like you got a little bit of Christmas, but that was your birthday at the same time. <laughs> or you might not get that much Christmas with your birthday coming. You get that for your birthday. I think my son, my son's birthday is December twenty eighth. Man, he been getting it bad, man. You know, he get he get the heavy Christmas, and they're like, oh yeah, it's your birthday. Uh, here you go. Yeah, happy but, birthday. Happy birthday. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, here go your Christmas gift, but he go a car with like five dollars in it. You know what I mean? That, that, that kind of deal. So, with, with the holidays, obviously, you know, your birthday coming up January 1st. Uh, are there any Christmas traditions that you like? What are some Christmas traditions that you like? I know it's kind of tough now, but you, you're actually going to be playing right. this year on Christmas Eve against I, the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, I always like the Christmas football games or the Christmas, you know, Christmas season when the bowl season start up. Like, I always like kind of that type of vibe. I always... I mean, of course, the Christmas music. Of course, the Christmas music you love. I always like when kind of the parades and stuff start up around Christmas. Right. You know what I mean? I like to see how they're going to decorate different trees and stuff. I wanted to do something, but my friend actually took my idea. What, what's your idea? I wanted to kind of, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go around and basically see who had the best Christmas lights, the best Christmas decorations in around Seattle. And whoever won, I was going to give them two tickets to the game. Like, oh, you got the best Christmas spirit, the best Christmas lights and everything. We get two tickets. 
Well, sound you can. Like a little contest. A little bit. Well, you can still you can still do that, TG. I can, I can rock with that. That's a, that's dope. So well, let me get this straight. But I mean, you would drive around mm -hmm. and you just go pick right. a house. Okay, this is good. You will continue a nominee. Like basically, our, I really wanted to kind of do more like. Cause I want to drive around, but I don't know all the spots, and that's kind of learning Seattle. But it's kind of like hashtag or show me your dirt, your decorations, and we'll have, we'll drive around, we'll see them in person. Okay, you know well, this, okay, this is an opportunity. Let, let, let's do something. This is an opportunity right now. You can create your hashtag right, right now, right. and then how can the folks find you on Twitter? What's your Twitter address? My Twitter, I'm Terrence Garvin 28. On Instagram, I'm Terrence Garvin 52. So maybe it's on like. Um, you add me, you hashtag Christmas, Christmas lights, hashtag Terrence Garvin, the Whisperer, or Terrence Garvin Whisperer, we're giving a little nickname out And bro, you all over the place, man. <laughs> Just give me one hashtag, right. Look, bro. Hashtag Terrence Garvin 52. Okay. Hashtag and hashtag Christmas lights. And add hashtag Terrence Garvin 52, hashtag Christmas lights, yeah. and at Terrence yeah. Garvin on Twitter or Instagram. Okay, that sounds good. I mean, I'm quite sure that there's gonna be some folks out there. Now, you know, they gonna see this and they gonna try to get some Christmas lights and then it'd be cool. You gotta come through though, man. Yeah, I definitely will. Okay. The decorations, the like, we pick on winter and we can do that. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see that, man, because I ain't gonna lie, to this day, that's one of my favorite things to do. I like to drive around and, and look and see the lights, man. When I was younger, we used to do that all the time. We used to drive around. In, back, in Maryland, like, I don't know, like, people really, they get into the Christian spirit. I can say that's, I don't know if it's like that everywhere. Man, yeah. 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 Now, have you, have you been, okay. I haven't had a Christmas out here. Okay, I know that, but have you been to Snowflake Lane down in Bellevue? They do the Christmas. Yeah, yeah I've been down there. Oh, that's, yeah. That's next to the Cheesecake Factory and all that. Yeah. Now, Cheesecake Factory is my favorite food. Okay, all so, right. So I'm down there a lot. I see that. I see that. They that, do that though. They do that a lot though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah they do it every day during like a certain time. It's I pretty seen the parade. That was, that was pretty cool. I was always actually out there. They got like a little fake kind of snow going. At the same yeah, time. yeah. So that now, was pretty cool. All right. So right now, if if I was able to bless you right now with anything you want for Christmas, right now you say, I want this right now for Christmas, G. What would it be? If you was able to bless me right now. For anything, if you want to get one wish, one gift for Christmas, what would it be? I get anything I want. Anything. I, well, <laughs> I'm not saying you're going to get it. I'm just saying hypothetically, if I were able to get it, what's one Christmas gift? Only You only get one. <laughs> That's tough. I mean, I know what I would go with. <laughs> you know what you go with? It comes from you or how does it work? Bruh. Yes, I'm the magic man. I'm magic. matter of fact, I'm I'm Santa Claus, and I can give you anything. Ho ho ho, Terrence Garvin. What is it that you want? Go. Um, I'm gonna need that new Range Rover that Shelton just grabbed that Wraith. <laughs> so let me get this straight, TG. <laughs> Out of all the things in the world, you chose I, I a Range Rover. Out of everything, that's hard. Like. A car. You, know you chose I mean? a car, man. Give me an example. What would you go with? I, would you oh, choose? selfishly speaking, like what would I want you to choose? What would you say? Uh, a Super Bowl victory. That, I'm selfish, though. You asked me what I would want you to choose. That's pretty selfish of me. Like you should choose this. It's something like when you say that, it's something more like. Are you talking about a tangible yeah, gift? Because I feel like we 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 working to go get that. Like we trying to go get that. Like, uh, it's almost like. I don't know all the way need you to go get that. Like, oh, get that. okay, okay. It's like, what's something that you're not going to get that somebody else was? Because I, I could have been like, I was going to hit you slick with like the Seahawks contract. <laughs> I was going, but I was like, you not going there. Okay, okay, okay. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Another thing I like to ask the guys when they in the car, um, Pete Carroll, can you give me a Pete Carroll story? Coach Pete's story. A Coach Pete story. Man, me personally. Yeah. And it's kind of like I don't want to ruin the joke, but I just love when he come in there and he he do his because we got little skits we do on our team, like little secret skits he kind of do for our team. Oh. Okay. And I just I just love I just personally personally love it's just something about it when Coach Pete come down he kind of acting like he's just so sad or he just going through it a little bit and he'll come talk to the team. And it'll be like, man, I just need somebody to come up here and tell their story, like a true confession type. It just, I don't know why, he just really made me laugh so hard every time he do it. Because uh -huh. it's how he acted out, how he flowed with it. Okay. But I love Coach Pete, man. I never, 
I never knew. I never knew that. No, no. I mean, that's you know, you just you just taking us inside the inside the locker room right there. Okay. Coach Peter is really funny. Like, really, I can honestly say, from the outside looking in and now being on the inside looking out, it's like you get this image of him that he's he's just so funny and he's bubbly. But it's kind of like when you in there with him, he just feel like he feel like your grandfather, like your your president. You just want to like be around. You want to talk to him, but it's like you want to go play for him. You want to go do something. So he come dap you over. He come jump with you and play with you. Like I don't know. It's like you want to make plays. So it's like. Grandfather, see, or like, I got you. you know what I, I mean? You, so. Well, you brought up confessions. Okay, We're on driving with G. We want to share a confession. Is there something that you want to confess about? Something that has happened? Just some kind of confession that you have. <laughs> okay, I'll change it up. <laughs> Give us one of your most embarrassing moments ever in the Terrence Garvin lifetime. Oh, An embarrassing moment. Oh, you're too cool for school. You don't have any embarrassing moments either. Okay. Tell us something that we don't know about Terrence Garvin. I'm top five most made fun of people on this team. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I'm top five most attacked, made fun of people. You mean to tell me? I'm top five. I'm going to get it every time they're going to come at me. Somebody come. Luke Ooh. Wilson. Luke. Wilson, I really should attack him while I got the camera, but Luke. What do you What do you want to say about Luke Wilson? Stop, no, yeah, this is your stop, chance. Attack him right now. He's gonna stop coming at me every day in the locker room, talking about my swag, on my different flavors. Like he tried to. What do you say? What do you say? He tried to tell people my swag still in 2009, 2012. Like you know what I mean? I'm like, nah, man. <laughs> I wear baggy clothes a little bit. Like my sweatpants would be baggy a little bit. Right. You know what I mean? I wear a hoodie that's a little bit big. So. They get on me pretty good in the locker room. Will Hoy. They don't like your style, bro. Do we? Oh, B Mac, they be on me. They be on me. They be on me pretty tough. I'm a Q, so you know what I mean? Okay. I'm Megan's high five, that's my okay. frat. Alright. Um, you know, our swag's a little different sometimes. But J Reed's a Q. So that don't get me off either. They'll be like, well, he don't. J Reed make fun of you too? J Reed to get on me a little bit. Man, that's like a little brotherly love. You know, but they they attack me pretty good. So <laughs> it's like every day I can really say I wake up and I really be like, all right, now I'm like, all right, let me put this on, let me put this on, let me come come a little bit correct for them so they get off me a little. Well, bit. man, you know what? Don't feel bad. Uh, <laughs> Mike Bennett and Cliff Aro talk about what I wear all the time, and so does Sherman. And that's the thing about Richard Sherman. I don't understand why he talk bad about me when he know he wears those slippers all day every day. Okay. Am I right? Yeah. You don't, I know you don't want to co-sign yeah, on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about Sherman. Sherman I'll be say on it. my team a little bit. Oh, he helps you out. Come get a tap. <laughs> <for him. Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. So, 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 you are the top five most faint, most made fun of on the team. That's interesting. That is. You wouldn't have thought that. No. Nah, because I mean, man. You look at me like, you know what I mean? The hair, the smile. You know. You wouldn't think that. It'd be like, I what mean, you bro, you, I mean, I, well, you, I mean, you, you what you wearing today is so simple. It's like, I don't know why they would get on what you're wearing. This would get attacked. This would get attacked. Luke, Luke would attack this. Okay, well, you know what? Speaking of Luke, what's your thoughts on this uh, Techno, Techno Thursday? Uh -huh. Yeah. I was waiting on you to ask me about that. You was waiting? <laughs> Let's get your thoughts on Techno Thursday. I'm one of the, I'm one of the members of anti Techno Thursday. So I wear the shorts a little bit longer on Thursday. <laughs> really? Now, from what I hear, I hear there was a few anti-Techno Thursday folks. Yes, yes. But little by little, they keep coming over to the dark side. We, we I remember I remember Sheldon Richardson. Sheldon he was tough. We he had Sheldon tough. Y'all had him tough. He, he was, was a part of the crew. He was one of the members. And then next thing you know. We lost him. We lost him. He had on short shorts. There's not a lot of us left. Okay. Another person that was a part of your team. Number 89, Doug Baldwin. I lost him. How you lose we him? We just got our little shake together, and I was like, man, I can't. We can't work together on Thursday with the, you know, you got the technos on. Because, you know, like I said, it all stems back to this Luke Terrence beef we got going right now. You know what I mean? I told you, me and Luke kind of, we go at each other a little bit. Right. It might be a tight end linebacker thing. Okay. But, you know what I mean? We kind of go at each other a little bit. So with us going at each other, with him being the creator of Techno Thursday, I'm, I'm anti. Okay, well, let me ask. This is a beef between you and Luke. Tupac Biggie. 
Tupac Biggie. Okay. One on one situation. Let's just say you, Luke. Luke, you. One on ones, 10 balls. 10 balls thrown at you guys. I'm winning it. You winning? I'm winning. You, you gonna stop Luke? Out of 10, how many balls does he catch? <laughs> well, you you already you already locked into this conversation now, so you can't back out. You can't you, you can't back out. I mean, how uh, I many does he catch? I give him two. two oh, he catches two out of ten. Great catches. Man, boy, I wonder <laughs> if Luke gonna hear this conversation. He gets two out of ten. Who there's a real Pac Biggie beef <laughs> between the two? <laughs> oh man. If I go on offense, Luke go on defense. How many I catch? How many you think I? How, what do I think you'll catch? How many I catch? Oh, Luke will D you up, man. So you're not really. I don't know if you got hands like that. What? So I'm gonna say if you I'm on the hands team. You on the hands team? That on the top eleven hands on the team. I say it every week. Every week you can't deny that. How can you? How can you deny that? And that what? Are you really on the hands I'm team? I'm on the hands team. If you have me on the hands team, that means I'm top eleven hands on the team. Is that not what that means? Is Luke Wilson on the hands team? Luke's on the hands team. Okay, Luke's on the hands team. But you got hands. You play. I defense. got hands. I play defense. <laughs> They gonna get on me. For did that. you play basketball? They gonna get on me for that one. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you play basketball and football? Mm -hmm. Was you was you nice football. on the on the basketball court? Yeah, I was nice. I was nice. I I joke around, but I do kind of joke around and say this. Yeah. But I think I could go like, I think I could go in a, a NBA game right now, seriously, and I could give me like, I could give me six. You can get six in the I NBA game. Six, six to ten. If you could choose only one basketball team in the NBA to play for, mm -hmm. which team would it be? Right now? Yeah. One team? What, you can only pick one team to play for. You, you you get an opportunity to go out there and get your six points. What team would you want to go play oh, for? Oh, and I'm playing with him? And you're playing with that team. Oh, I'm on the Cavs. Oh, you a LeBron fan, oh, huh? I'm with the King. I'm with LeBron. Kick it to me. I'm going to bust this through. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you play, you play basketball in high school? Mm -hmm. Was you nice? Yeah, I was nice. What'd you average? I was nice. I averaged probably about 15. Now, 15, 16. What type of game were you? Were you were you back to the basket or were you facing the basket? Mm. What type of game were you? I had my game. You you look like you was meat potatoes, back to the basket, throw it here, down low post no. game. Your handles ain't really, your handles were nice. Honestly, I call myself kind of like a mellow type. Mm. You know what I mean? Real smooth, nice jumper. Right. Get to the rack when you want to finish. Speaking of Melo, Carmelo Anthony right now is with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Right. Will the Oklahoma City Thunder make it to the Western Conference Finals this year? Not the Finals. Yeah. It's because of Melo, ain't it? No, it's not. You ever notice whatever team Carmelo goes to Mello, is guaranteed not to win? Melo is a scorer, though. You got to think. They got Melo. Still? They got Russ. Is Carmelo still a scorer, though? Yeah, Melo. No, he just passed somebody on the all-time scoring list. But I'm like just, he just he just moved up like fifth on the high. But don't you how think, do you say he's not a scorer? Because he's he should be he, he should be a six man right now. No, he's not right a now. six man. But don't you think that's kind of messing up the chemistry when you got uh, Paul himself. George and Westbrook out there? I think. I mean, why don't Paul George go to the six man and he come off the bench and run the second unit? Because Paul George is a now well, I don't know. I what just you was about to say. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just I just don't think the Oklahoma City Thunder needs that kind of production from him. Here's another I conversation. Think they gotta find themselves. They kind of like that's they're, that's the thing about them. They ain't they gonna never find the themselves team. with Carmelo on the team. Here's what I want to talk to you about. I always like to ask this of you guys, man. What, tell us tell us what it's like, man, when that when that stadium at CenturyLink Field is rocking, man. What's what, what's that like playing in front of the Twelves? That's it's dope. It's definitely dope. They're loud. Loud. It's kind of something you can't, you can't mimic. You can't, you can't really. I don't even think you can really all the way prepare for it because it's like once you get in there, it's so loud. Like they be up, they be turned up. It, it, it's almost like a little bit of a show. You know what I mean? It's definitely like a little bit of show. Like the crowd, the twelve, the twelve flag getting raised. The right. crowd coming out. It just feel like, it feel like it's almost like you, you, you want to make a, every, every little play you make, every play, every play you make is a major play, and then you really feel it because you really feel like. If it's just a one-yard tackle for a loss, you just feel like you're putting on a show for the crowd because they're so into it. You know what, I mean? what did you – so this is your fifth year in the league, and this is your first year with the Seahawks, right? Yes, so previous to being here, what were your thoughts about the Seahawks before you got here? Uh, 
honestly, as crazy, I love the Seahawks before I got here. Like my 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 first three years, I was in Pittsburgh, and I used to be with this dude, Sean Spence. It's my it's like my big bro. But I always would joke with him and be like, we should do this kind of how the Seahawks do it, and just like who's got my back, just different stuff like that. I would joke with them, and they would make jokes like, man, you should go play for them, or you should just you want to be one of them so bad. And the irony that I came out here, you know what I mean? It's crazy. You think you think a lot of a lot of NFL players around the league silently want to come be a part of the Seahawks. I think, I think honestly, you always want to be a part of a team that's kind of like it almost feel like how you grew up. You know what I mean? Like it's a team that's having fun on the field. It's a team you're yelling. You're you feel like I mean even before the celebrations, you just felt like they was having fun all the time. You know what I mean? It's like when you're growing up playing football, playing sports, you always I mean for the most part, like I was on them teams that we always we would have fun. We'd do something. We'd have fun. You know what I mean? It, it never seemed like it was a, oh, you can't wear this towel. Like, I remember Bruce's towel used to hang to, like, his knees. Like, you know what I mean? It, just, it was always, like, a swag, like a have fun type right. thing. Who on this team right now would you say has the most fun on this team? Who is the guy that sticks out to you like, this person has the most fun? <laughs> it's hard for me to say. I feel like, boom. <laughs> you know what? I got respect for you because I know you two got a beef. I wondered if you was gonna still give him love. I agree with that. I think like, Luke has the most fun. He's always having fun. He's always smiling. He's jumping. You know what I mean? Lock it. Lock it. Look like he's always having fun. Wait a minute. When you said top five being made fun of, Tyler Lockett is in there too, ain't he? Is he with me? I think Tyler Lockett. They be making fun of Tyler. Tyler got. But you know, Tyler got that spoken word gift. Ooh. So Tyler got some words with him to come back kind of strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did a I did a comedy roast with Tyler. He tore me up pretty yeah, good. Tyler know how to do that a little. Yeah, he not. What What do you want to do when you're done playing football? What does life after football look like for you? Um, successful. I would love to be a coach. You know what I mean? I feel like I really do understand a lot about the game. So I would love to be able to coach. You know, be able to get back to to the game mm -hmm. and get back to the youth. Because to me, and as crazy as it sounds, like I feel like you learn when you're younger. You learn in high school. You learn in these colleges. You know what I mean? Right. When you get to the league, I feel like it's applying what you've learned. I feel like it's really like you have to go out there and use your skill set, or you have to use these tools that you've learned throughout your life. And it's like I feel like the league is more. You got to be in the right spot. The league's a little bit more thinking a little bit more of the puzzle while growing up in college and high school is more getting to the puzzle or how I'm going to fix Ooh, the puzzle. I like that. I, that. That was heavy. I, I, I like how you, you put that. That's pretty solid. If you could give advice to parents out there that have kids that are playing sports, what advice would you give to the parents right now? Um, honestly, I would say let them play. It's crazy to sound like, I think sports, I mean, sports in particular, I say football in particular, I think they teach you so much. You know what I mean? They teach you life lessons. They teach you how to how to get through different things. They teach you how to cope with ups and downs, how to deal with other people in a sense of team activity. They teach you how to work with people. They just, they just teach you so much. So I would just say, like, let your kids play sports. You know what I mean? I know, especially football, with the dangers of football nowadays, you know what I mean? People kind of like starting to pull away from football, but I just say in terms of football, I think football is the ultimate team sport. I think some of the lessons you learn in football, you can't learn from every, all activities from all, you know what I mean? Just different gatherings. So, I mean, I just think it's something you should let your kids play. And I especially like, if you're gonna play football, I think you should start when you're a little bit younger, like you're a little bit of a age 12, or age, 11, 10, you know what I mean? If you start that 13, 15 high school range, it's kind of like you're just learning the, the physicality of it. It could be a shock. That's when I think it's a little bit more dangerous, a little bit more wild, because it's like you're older, you're bigger, but you don't all the way know mm -hmm. what you're doing. So I, I think football, is, in particular, is a sport. Like, let them play, let them learn it, you know what I mean? And really teach the safeties and securities of it. Right. Just like anything, it's like, you know what I mean? If you're going to be a hunter when you grow up, you know what I mean? You want to start kind of when you're young so you can learn it. But right. it's like you learn the safeties and securities of it. Right. Like in everything, you have to learn the proper way to do it, the safeties and securities. If, if you don't learn that till you get older, but you're a little bit more violent, that's when it can be dangerous.
this Sunday, you guys play against the Rams. Um, there are going to be fans in the stadium. There's going to be fans watching across the country. There's going to be fans obviously watching at home in front of their TVs. What kind of message do you have for all the fans? Mm -hmm. We're going to be prepared. We're going to go to work this week, and we're going to come prepared. We're going to come, we're going to come do what we got to do. We're going to go to work. We're going to be prepared, and we, we're going to compete. That's one thing I can say about the Seahawks. Every week, no matter what, they're going to come compete. Like we're going to come fight, and we're going to fight. From the beginning of the game to the end of the game, we're going to come fight. All right, TG. Um, I'm going to go ahead and predict it. I'm going to predict a fumble recovery for you. I just want to put it out there. Okay. Boom. I'll put it out there in the air. Put that, put that, put that energy out there. I'm predicting a fumble recovery for TG. There you go. I'll put it out there. <laughs> hey man, appreciate you, you driving with G. Thank you. I'll see you soon. The Whisperer, TG, T Gar, T, all the different names you got, but your government name is Terrence Garvin. And tell them folks, quit making fun of you, man. <laughs> Don't stop making fun of me, man. <laughs> hey, Terrence Garvin 52. Y'all follow me on Instagram. All right, man. Thanks a lot, brother. <laughs>